Now, I'm going to tell you exactly how to take care for the battery in your Mac. How often should you charge it? What are the best practices? Should you unplug it? Or should you just leave it connected to the charger all the time? This video is based purely on Apple recommendations and on my experience with MacBooks over the 10 years of using them. And I believe that these techniques might help you prolong your battery life as well. So do yourself a favor and your Mac and watch this entire video from the beginning till the end. Battery technology and its managing has changed a lot over this last decade. And out there, there are a lot of outdated information, either on YouTube or just Google itself. So I want to summarize it and give you the most recent information and the best care for the battery in this video. But let's start with the battery itself. I want to tell you how it works inside of the battery so you will better understand the processes inside. And it might help you determine what to actually do to the battery and what not. MacBooks are using lithium-ion batteries and the energy in the battery is stored in electrolytes. The way how the battery works, how it's charging and discharging is by these ions moving from the anode to the cathode. And imagine when it moves all the way from one side to the other one that fulfills one charge cycle. So an ideal would be to keep the battery all the time in the middle at 50% when there is an even distribution between the cathode and anode. Of course, that's not possible all the time. But we can still avoid the extremes. We can avoid having it 100% charged and we can avoid going all the way to zero. What you have to understand is that you will complete one charge cycle when the energy equals to 100%. Not every single charge is one battery cycle. It can take several days to fulfill one battery cycle. Imagine with these M1s or M2 MacBooks, they can last for about 15 hours. So if you use the Mac on the battery for about 6 to 8 hours a day, it will easily take you through 2 days. So one battery cycle will be in 2 days. And if Apple is claiming that these Macs should have 1000 cycles, that will easily take you over 5 years of usage before you should see the drop in the performance and drop in the battery capacity. And with the right care you can prolong the battery life even longer. There are factors you can't influence, but there are things you can definitely do something about. And the main factor is your charging routine. So how often you should charge? Should you use the battery all the way to zero? Or should you keep it plugged to the charger all the time? Let's answer these questions right now. Let's start with a question why you are probably here for. And that is if you should keep your Mac plugged in all the time. My general answer is more towards yes. You can keep it plugged in all the time. But it's not only one sided. For example, if you work, continuously work on the computer, you need it for school, you need it for some project, you are working for 6 hours in the morning, then it's definitely better to keep it. You don't need to drain the battery all the time. You can just keep it plugged in. But with this technique, it doesn't mean that you should keep it plugged in 24-7. If you are using the Mac like this, you can, for example, unplug it over the night. Simply leave it discharge a bit over the night. It is a laptop, so you should use it like that. You have the battery for some reason there, so use it. Generally, the best way of prolonging the battery life is to keep it somewhere between 80 to 20% and charge it periodically to be in this range. Apple has become very good at keeping MacBook batteries healthy. They have different software and intelligent charging things implemented in macOS. So even if you are plugged in all the time, these features in system settings can optimize battery charging. In a nutshell, macOS is actually trying to keep the charge of the battery around this 80% as I mentioned before. So every time macOS charges to 80% very quickly and the remaining 20% charges much slower. It is also known as a trickle charge. Another interesting thing is that once the Mac reaches 100% charge, it will stop charging it. Even if it shows 100%, it will slowly start drain the battery. It will be using mostly the adapter. So it will go a little bit lower, 95, even 
without charging that, without keeping it all the way stressed to the 100%. And Mac is also learning your daily routine. So if it knows that you use the Mac only after you come back from work, three, four o'clock afternoon, it will keep it around 80% all the time and charge it right before the expected time of usage. So what about the common advice of calibrating the battery by discharging it all the way to zero and then charging it to 100%. That's an example of very outdated information. New MacBooks definitely don't need anything like that and it's actually very bad to do that. You should never let your Mac drain to 0%. And same, I can repeat what I said before, same you should not leave it to go all the way to 100% and keep it there all the time. As I said before, Mac is managing this one side. It will charge it to 100% but it will not keep it there. Through the software and other battery optimizations, it will start slowly recharging it, getting it to 95, something like that. But fully draining the battery is your fault. So how often should I charge my Mac? Well, that's something I mentioned in the beginning. So the battery life is measured in the battery cycles. If you recharge your Mac and drain it to 0% and 100, that's one cycle. But if you just use it a little bit and use 20% of the battery one day and recharge it back, then use 20% another day and another day. This way, you can make one cycle of the battery to be, for example, five days. By the way, you can easily check how many cycles your MacBook has by clicking on the Apple logo in the top left corner. And if you hold down the option key and click on the system information, you will find this extended table. Now select the power option and you will find it there. But the battery health also depends on many other factors. One of them is for sure the charger. I always recommend using the Apple charges, using the official charges or at least some renowned brands. For a short period of time you can charge it through the monitor or through some docking stations. But definitely don't use any of these cheap Chinese chargers you'll be hurting the battery a lot more than you think. One of the biggest contributors to a poor battery life is also heat. Try to keep your Mac in sort of cool environment and surely avoid using it outside in very hot weather or on the direct sunlight. And connected to that is also the ventilation. Make sure you always have a proper ventilation. So the common thing of using the Mac on the bed is the worst thing you can do because on the bottom you are blocking the natural airflow and it will cause overheating of the whole Mac and once the battery is overheating it is causing breaking of these electrolytes we talked about in the beginning and that will accelerate the degradation of the battery no matter how many cycles you have used. Well, let's summarize it now it seems like a lot of things to pay attention to. But this is just recommendations. I will now put you on the screens kind of a summary of what we talked about in this video. But I guess you don't want to spend all day stressing over when you should unplug the Mac or panicking if it's on the battery or if it's 100% charged for so long. These are just recommendations, so don't worry about it too much. Most of us will buy new Macs within three to five years. So 99% of us will have no problem with the battery over this period of time. But if you can, it's surely worth paying attention to these tips I shared with you today and take a good care for your Mac.